Hello, Mata Jimmy, and you're watching on Bill TV's Prime Time. Now, headlines. Head of the Lok Sabha Election Union Home Minister Amit Shah said that the central government is considering pulling back some troops from Jammu and Kashmir and leaving law and order to the police. The Minister of External Affairs on Wednesday summoned the United States Acting Deputy Chief of Mission Gloria Barbena to its office in New Delhi over Washington's remark on Avin Cage was arrested. Head of the Lok Sabha post alone, Lok Sabha member of AAP Sushil Kumar Rinku joined the PJP on Wednesday and the party headquarters in New Delhi. The Maryland State Police on Wednesday said that the six people who were missing after the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed Tuesday in Baltimore, Maryland have been presumed dead. Head of the Lok Sabha election, Union Home Minister Amit Shah said that the central government is considering pulling back some troops from Jammu and Kashmir and leaving law and order to the police. In an interview with Jammu and Kashmir based Kalistan News, Shah said that the government will leave law and order to the Jammu and Kashmir police. We have plans to pull back troops and leave law and order to the Jammu and Kashmir police alone. We are strengthening the police who are at the forefront during the encounter. Home Minister Amit Shah said the troops will slowly and slowly go to the barracks. Such a design has already been formed. We have made a blueprint of seven years, he added. The Home Minister also indicated that the government is considering revoking the Armed Forces Special Powers Act in parts of Kashmir. We will definitely consider this proposal, revoke the Armed Forces Special Powers Act. The situation is being normalized. We are speedily considering the proposal, he said. The AFSPA gives armed forces personnel operating in disturbed area. An area or district is notified as disturbed under the AFSPA to facilitate the operations of the armed forces. You know, Home Minister Amit Shah also said that under the garb of the Article 370, the youth were pushed down the path of terrorism in the erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir, which is marching ahead with peace since its abrogation nearly five years ago. In Jammu and Kashmir, under the garb of Article 370, which was a catalyst for separatists, ideology, the youth were pushed down the path of terrorism and were misused by Pakistan, he said. The lone Lok Sabha member of AAP, Sushil Kumar Rinko, has joined the PJP on Wednesday. Along with him, Jalanda Vesemele Shital Angural also joined the PJP ranks at the party headquarters in Delhi. In 2023, Rinku joined the AAP from Congress. The MP said that he joined the PJP for Punjab's development, particularly in Jalanda, and leveled accusations against the AAP-led state government for its alleged neglect in facilitating development projects. सारी बात मैंने बता दी है मैं जलंधर के विकास के लिए जलंधर की बेहतरी के लिए जलंधर की तरक्की के लिए आज मैंने ये फैसला लिया है और हम जलंधर को मिलकर आगे बढ़ाएंगे जो केंद्र सरकार के सारे प्रोजेक्ट है वो हम जलंधर में लेके आएंगे the Election Commission of India has issued show cause notices to PJP MP Dilip Ghosh and Congress leader Supriya Shri Nade for their remarks against West Bengal CM Mamta Banerjee and PJP's Lok Sabha candidate Kangana Ranawat, respectively. Earlier, Trinamal Congress TMC spokesperson Kunal Ghosh demanded that Dilip Ghosh's candidature for the Lok Sabha elections be cancelled. The former state PJP chief Ghosh sought to clarify his comments, saying that he was speaking in a political context. On Tuesday, the TMC filed a complaint with the Election Commission of India. Sri Nade had also claimed that the remark made on Kangana Ranavad was posted by somebody who had access to her accounts. Taking cognizance of the derogatory post, the National Commission for Women NCW called the conduct disgraceful and intolerable, which goes against the dignity of women. It also wrote to the Election Commission to take strict action against Congress and its leader, Supriya Sri Nade. Former Indian Police Service Officer Sanjeev Bhatt was on Wednesday convicted in 28-year-old drug peddling case. The sacked IPS officer had allegedly falsely implicated a Rajasthan-based lawyer, Surmay Singh Rajpur Hoyt, 
of on charges of possessing around a kilogram of drugs under the narcotics drugs and psychotropic substances act at Palanpur in 1996 when he was the superintendent of police in Banash Kata. Banash Kata police had claimed that the drug was found in a hotel room occupied by Raj Purohit in the district's Palanpur town. However, a probe by the Rajasthan police revealed that Raj Purohit was allegedly falsely implicated and that he was reportedly abducted by the Bansakata police from his residence in Pali. The 1988 batch officer of Gujarat Keta was suspended by the Gujarat government after he filed an affidavit in the Supreme Court contending that he had attended a meeting held by the Chief Minister of Gujarat Modi who had asked the top of police officials to let Hindus went out the anger against the minority community following the attack on the Sabarmati Express in which 59 Hindus were torched to death near the Kotra railway station. But whose tenure had remained controversial had also accused the Supreme Court appointed special investigation team formed to probe the Gujarat rights case of shielding Mr. Modi and top ranking police officials of Gujarat. He was sacked by the Union Ministry of Home Affairs in August 2015 by unauthorized absence from service. His wife Sweta Bhatt had contested the assembly election in 2012 from over Washington's remark on Arvin Kejiwa's arrest. Details of the meeting have not been released, but this comes the day after U.S. State Department spokesperson said it is monitoring reports on Delhi Chief Minister Arvin Kejiwa's arrest and called on New Delhi to ensure a fair and timely legal process for the jailed Amatmi party leader. The U.S. State Department's comments came in turn days after Germany's foreign office stressed that Kejiwal, like any other Indian citizens facing charges, is entitled to a fair and impartial trial. The External Affairs Ministry had said that such remarks are seen as interference in the judicial process and undermining the independence of the country's judiciary. Bias assumptions are most unwarranted, it further stated. The Maryland State Police on Wednesday said that the six people who were missing after the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse Tuesday in Baltimore, Maryland have been presumed dead. The Singapore flagged vessel collided with one of the pillars of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Maryland, leading to its collapse on Tuesday. Earlier, as stated by U.S. President Joe Biden, eight people were unaccounted for after the Baltimore Bridge collapse, out of which two have been rescued, while the rescue operation was ongoing for the remaining six. The shipping company Synergy Maritime Group said that on Tuesday in a statement that there were 22 Indians on board. U.S. Secretary of Transportation Pete Budek emphasized that the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, which collapsed, was not an ordinary bridge and was one of the cathedrals of American infrastructure and added that the path to normalcy will not be easy. Following the collapse, the U.S. Secretary of Transportation said that bringing everything back to normal would not be quick and expensive inexpensive. Maryland Governor Wes Moore said that the container ship before colliding with the Francis Scott Key Bridges in, Bridge in Baltimore made a May Day call, which prompted officials to stop traffic and try to evacuate people on the bridge, the New York Times reported, citing several federal and Maryland officials. We'll take a short break. Keep watching. Gorom te pet aromon ke thanda rakhe toki Ghar jal pratirodhak cement se nahi bana to padhega rona pani ghusne se concrete kamzor ho jaye Star Weather Sheet Cement kharab mausam mein ghar weatherproof banaye Star Weather Sheet jal pratirodhak cement weatherproof ghar Darma Tiger hai na Black Tiger Cement Welcome back. 
New research released by the International Forum for Environment, Sustainability and Technology has shed light on Assam's renewable energy generation potential and the imperative for policy enhancement and institutional capacity building to facilitate large-scale RE expansion. The research reports titled Assam's Renewable Energy Potential Reassessment Focus on Solar, Wind and Biomass, Enabling Renewable Energy Growth in Assam and Impact of ISTS Waiver on Economics of Solar Power Procurement in Assam were unveiled during a multi-stakeholder dialogue organized by iForest in Gohati's Hotel Vivanta on March 27. According to the findings, Assam possesses a significantly higher RE generation potential than previously estimated by central government agencies. This potential is deemed sufficient to support a low-carbon pathway to meet the state's escalating electricity demand. However, the research underscores the need for policy tightening and institutional capacity building to overcome existing limitations to growth. Laya Maduri, Secretary of the Department of Science, Technology and Climate Change, emphasized the state government's commitment to climate change, adaptation and medication. Assam, already one of India's most vulnerable states to climate change, faces a substantial carbon footprint due to its reliance on fossil fuels. In response, the government plans to add approximately 1,200 megawatt of RE capacity under the Assam Renewable Energy Policy 2022-27 to and another 1,000 megawatt under the Mukhya Mantri Soro Shakti Prokbolpo initiative. is a very important uh, area of growth for uh, you know all geographies right now because india has committed to a low carbon pathway we are committed to having 50 percent of our uh, you know uh, the energy requirement being met from non-fossil fuel sources so renewable energy is the way forward for power demand to be met now assam as far as assam is concerned a big challenge that Assam is facing is that the demand is very increasing at a very fast rate. It has already doubled in the past decade and it is projected to double in the next decade. And uh, the, the challenge for the state is to meet it through green resources. The good thing is that ever since the uh, notification of the new policy in 2022, uh, we see a massive uh, uh, you know, growth in investment momentum as far as last, large projects are concerned. So, the policy jo thi, solar policy in 2017 was 100 megawatt add hua tha capacity and already now there are 1000 megawatt ke projects in the pipeline. Mein hai. और उससे ज़्यादा कि EOIs भी आ चुके हैं जिसको आगे डेवलप किया जाएगा। तो वो बहुत ही पॉजिटिव डेवलपमेंट है स्टेट के लिए कि रेन्यूबल एनर्जी सेक्टर को यहाँ भी वो इम्पोर्टेंस दी जा रही है। So I think those were the two reasons why we decided to come to us, you know, Assam to do this research and present, bring together stakeholders to have this discussion। क्योंकि क्या होता है कि लोग अपना काम तो कर रहे हैं, an effort to bring people together for knowledge sharing and also to uh, find solutions which are uh, you know to common problems essentially Vivo Buyan, Managing Director of Assam Power Generation Corporation Limited, highlighted the utility's commitment to green growth with plans to expand generation capacity to 2,000 megawatt by 2030, 92% of which will be from renewable sources. However, in forest iForest research indicates the need for accelerated RE capacity expansion. Assam's electricity demand is projected to double by 2030, necessitating nearly 3,000 megawatt of RE capacity by 2026 to 2027 and 5,000 megawatt by 2031 to 32 to meet renewable energy obligations and ensure energy security. While the official assessment by the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy estimates Assam's RE potential at 14.4 GW, iForest reassessment suggests a significantly higher capacity. To fully harness this potential and simulate RE investments, structural challenges limiting, limiting sector growth must be addressed. Having an ambitious plan for renewable energy, uh, there are two, three areas where we are focusing. Uh, one is solar energy. Uh, second is uh, green hydrogen and third is also for small hydro projects. Uh, although we have got a limited hydro potential, uh, still we are going ahead for large hydro project like on 20 megawatt project is going on and then small hydros like 24 megawatt and 22.5 megawatt, those kind of uh, small hydro projects are also going on. 
and there has been extensive uh, solarization plan is there, both from two agencies, one is APDCL and one APGCL. Uh, apart from that, there will be Palm Hydro, Palm Hydro project and uh, what we call battery storage project. So these are uh, part of our uh, RE strategy. Uh, this is my second session with iForest. Uh, it's, uh, they have got excellent expertise and they know how to connect those stakeholders and I think for the first time in Assam they are doing it. It is an excellent opportunity for all the stakeholders to exchange our ideas and we get to know a lot of things which are going on. Um, so definitely it's a great initiative. You know, Mr. Smriti Rani and current MP for Mamiti on Tuesday played the religious card while addressing a public rally in Uttarakhand's Pauri Garwal. Speaking at the rally, campaigning for PJP candidate Anil Baluni, Irani asked the crowd if they will vote for a party that denied the invitation for the Pran Prashishta of the Ram Temple. She further asked if any of the people vote for the ideology of the Congress party that considers Hindus as terrorists. It may be mentioned that the Congress and some other opposition parties refused to accept invitation to the Ram Mandir's Brand Prashishta saying that it was a political event of the PJP. पर क्या एक भी वोट उस पार्टी के लिए जा सकता है जिन्होंने ना राम के अस्तित्व को नकार दिया इस प्रश्न का उत्तर दे जिसे हम देवभूमि कहते हैं क्या उस कांग्रेस पार्टी का क्या एक भी व्यक्ति स्वागत करेगा जिसने भव्य राम मंदिर में राम जी की प्राण प्रतिष्ठा समारोह के लिए आमंत्रण को ठुकरा दिया इस सवाल का जवाब दे क्या इस देवभूमि पर कांग्रेस के उस नेता के लिए कांग्रेस की उस विचारधारा के लिए एक भी वोट पड़ेगा जो हिंदुओं को आतंकवादी कहता है क्या इस देवभूमि पर एक भी वोट उस कांग्रेस पार्टी के लिए पड़ेगा ये वो भूमि है जहां देवताओं का वास है और जहां के शूर वीरों ने भारत की सरहद पर जाकर मां भारती के संरक्षण के लिए अपने प्राणों की आहुति दी इस भूमि पर क्या एक भी वोट कांग्रेस को पड़ेगा जिन्होंने धारा 370 का हटाने का विरोध किया जिस कांग्रेस पार्टी ने भारत की संसद में भारत के संविधान को चुनौती दी और भारत की सेना से साक्ष्य मांगा कि बताओ पाकिस्तान में जाकर तुमने दुश्मन को किस तरह से खदेड़ा आज सैनिकों के पूर्व सैनिकों के और शौर्य वीरों के परिवार से पूछना चाहती हूं क्या एक भी वोट ऐसी निर्लज पार्टी को जाएगा विल टेक अनदर शॉर्ट ब्रेक कीप वाचिंग Vomiting, diarrhea, pet bikha, skin rashes, face, tongue, or lips phuli ja, saath logu le dukpa, itu khan sop, food intolerance na hoi le allergy laga symptoms ase. Doctor na hoi le healthcare provider ke consult kuri bhi, aru nijor laga dietary requirements ki khabu le lage itu jani bhi. Pack food ki nia time te, label te likhi thakya specific ingredients, aru advisory statement kan hodai puri bhi. Bishipar Tai Khan claim kure, lactose free, gluten free, or may contain allergens. Inika khar jinis khan nakini bi, kile koile, tade thagia kumba ingredient pra, abnike allergy hopo pare. Abnike lactose intolerance ase koile, dud na hoile bi, dud pra bana khana khan na lubi, aro abnike gluten intolerance ase koile, wheat na hoile, wheat pra khana bana khan na lubi. Allergy reaction to bishi hoi shi koi le, jolli treatment lo bhi aru doctor lo ko consult kori bhi. Welcome back. 
At least six people, including five Chinese nationals and one Pakistani, have been killed in a suicide blast in Bisham City in Shangla, Khyber, Pakhtokwa, due news reported, citing officials. Amid sketchy information coming out of Pakistan, some pictures have come out on social media which show the site of the blast. Some locals could be seen pulling out the deceased from the ditch. It also showed smoke arising out of the spot. Shabir Hussain Turi, a journalist and editor of the Urdu News Net in Pakistan, posted some visuals purportedly belonging to the attack site. First of all, I would like to condemn uh, the terrorist attack uh, on the Chinese engineers at District Shangla, uh, Bisham and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, which resulted in killing of five Chinese nationals and their Pakistani driver. Uh, it seems uh, that the proxies of uh, Pakistan army uh, have carried out uh, this attack and this time uh, Pakistan is double gaming uh, China uh, as they have done with the United States of America in the so-called war on terror. We have been informing uh, the international community, particularly the United Nations Human Rights Council, uh, and I personally uh, intervened uh, uh, at the UN Human Rights Council. It's on record uh, that Pakistan and TTP uh, have done a deal with each other, and 55,000 uh, TTP leaders and their families uh, are resettled in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, and uh, some areas of former uh, FATA, uh, which is now Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, have been handed over uh, to the TTP. And we also informed the world uh, about the terrorist training camp in different areas of Pakistan, particularly in Khyber Agency and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, where terrorists are trained uh, to um, uh, attack um, uh, different communities in Pakistan, particularly the Pashtuns and Baloch. Uh, why these areas are bleeding and other areas of Pakistan like Pakistani attack and more uh, seems to be in the pipelines. It will not stop until or unless Pakistan is made uh, accountable uh, for its actions and uh, whatever is happening. was attacked by opposition parties. The candidate said while addressing a press conference and demanded for his security, he said that he was attacked at Bandaita village on the Bedfana police station. I was attacked with stones with an intention of killing, the captain said. A police complaint has been filed at the Bedfana police station and pleaded for justice at the earliest. That's all we have for now. Keep watching Hornbill TV. Good night.